What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, my name is Akeem Haynes. I'm a two-time Olympian, Olympic bronze medalist, author, motivational speaker, and sports commentator. On my channel, we talk boxing, MMA, track and field, and of course, motivation and encouraging content. If this is something that you enjoy, then I hope that you subscribe to the channel. Now, let's get into the video. Emmanuel Nivarate versus Liam Wilson. This is happening over in Arizona for the vacant WBO junior lightweight title. So Nevarate is coming up weight to 130. Now Nevarate fought between 122, 126, whereas Liam Wilson has been fighting at 130, even up to 135 pounds sometimes. So will the extra weight for Nevarate make a difference? Hard to say when we haven't seen him in the ring yet, but it does make for an interesting scenario. Let's get into it. Let's start with Emmanuel Nevarate, 36 wins, one loss. 30 wins by way of knockout. He has not lost the fight since 2012. He's got two wins against Isaac Dogbe, Christopher Diaz, Joette Gonzalez, Eduardo Baez, his recent fight. So he's had some tough fights underneath his belt. One thing about Emmanuel Nevarate, as we know, is that he's going to come to fight and there will be a lot of punches thrown. He has a high work rate. Nevarate isn't the most polished fighter from a fundamental standpoint, but I think that's also what makes him successful in the ring because his shots come from all over from different angles. He's got looping shots. He's got wide shots. He's got wide hooks and uppercuts with his reach. He can hit his target from a good distance, right? Sometimes he lunges forward to catches you on the chin. You have to be attentive when you're in the ring with him. The other thing about Nevarate as well too is he's a switch hitter, right? He can fight from the orthodox stance or he can switch to southpaw. Nevarate on the inside is a tough guy to beat because of how well he works when he's there, right? He mixes up his attacks well. He throws so much, it can be hard to see all of them coming, right? Like eventually one of them got to get through, right? And when that one gets through, that's when he really starts to punishes you because all it takes is one shot for it to land before he gets confident and before he continues to come forward and let his hands go a lot more at a quicker rate. Once he gets going and starts to assert himself and find this groove, man, he's going to put his opponent in punishment. punishment. Do you remember what he did to Joette Gonzalez, right? Gonzalez was too tough for his own good, right? He's a good fighter, but he took a massive amount of punishment that he didn't need to take. He got hit with every kind of shot in the book and he was fighting back, right? But he was still taking a massive amount of punishment. I think he broke his orbital bone, if I'm not mistaken, right? But that's what Nevarate can do. He will make you pay any chance that he gets. Now, in his most recent fight against Eduardo Baez, that was an interesting fight, right? You know, if you've been watching the videos on the channel, you know, I never trash any fighter. This isn't what we do here. I give my honest opinion as you all give your honest opinion as you're sharing your thoughts in the comments. But I didn't think that was a very good performance from Nevarate, right? He looked like he didn't want to be in the ring to me, right? Looked like he was just going through the motions. Even even though he did get the stoppage, right? He's just a better boxer than Baez, right? But if he was fighting like that against a higher caliber fighter, he might have lost that night, in my opinion, right? News came out that he was struggling with his whole weight situation. So maybe he didn't have the energy that he needed and would have liked to have used, right, in that fight. Plus, mixed with the long layoff, all that could have played a factor as well, too, but, right? But I do like the fact that he is fighting early in the year, and it should be interesting to see how he handles the new weight. What would his body look like? What would his mannerisms look like in the fight? Will the power carry on? One thing about Nevarate as well, too, is you know when he gets inside of the ring, he is all business, and I'm sure he is going to be looking to put on a spectacular performance this weekend. But let's talk about his opponent, Liam Wilson. 11 wins, one loss, seven wins by way of knockout. This is Liam's first fight outside of Australia, where he's from. He's fought some good opposition. He lost his first fight. 2021 when he fought Joe None, who has a record of 19 and 2. When he fought him the following year, he got his revenge and he got the win. Then he goes on to fight Matias Ruida, whose only loss came from his fight against Oscar Valdez before losing to Liam Wilson. And that was a big step for Wilson. Not to mention Matias had 32 knockouts on his resume, so he can pop, right? So I will say this: don't write this guy off 
because you may not have heard of him before. This could make for an interesting matchup. Wilson has the height advantage, even though Nivarate has the reach advantage. Wilson is skilled. He's an accurate puncher. He's a good body puncher. He's not afraid to mix it up on the inside if that's where the fight is going to go. And he can come around your high guard as well, too, with the shots. He can clip you with cell shots to open up a bigger shot. He's a good counter puncher. And he throws a lot, too. And he's going to need to have a high work rate against Manuel Nivarate. He makes good adjustments in real time, and that's going to be essential in this fight. Going back to his last fight when he fought Ruida, right, there was a sequence either in the third or the fourth round, can't quite remember off the top of my head right now, but Ruida was on the attack and he was getting pushed back, right? Wilson was on the ropes and then he leaned back on the rope, switched to southpaw and took a step and landed a crushing body shot to Ruida, followed by an overhand right and dropped him, but they called it a slip. But I was like, wait a minute, you mean to tell me this guy's a switch hitter too? And he knows how to use it to his advantage? I said, okay, this dude is not chopped liver. He is here to win. And he's coming in this fight. I was very impressed with this performance in that fight against Ruida, right? So that was his best fight of his life. And that's good because you always want to look sharp in your fights. And if we based on who looked better in their recent fights, then Wilson would win. But this is boxing, and this is not how it goes. So who wins? If Neverate comes in looking like how he did last fight, I think it's going to be a long night for him, especially moving up to a guy who's been in a bigger weight class. Now, Liam Wilson, in his fight against Ruida in the ninth, 10th round, he started to slow it down a little bit, and he got tagged with some shots. So I'm wondering, as the fight goes on in the championship rounds, if it does, whose conditioning will be better if the work rate starts out high, especially early in the fight. So in this one, I'm taking Emmanuel Nevarate to win this fight by a late stoppage. This is Wilson's first 12-round fight. Nevarate has more experience in that category, and he has a strong chin as well. And I think this style of fight and his consistent work rate will give Wilson some trouble in the later rounds. But don't be surprised if, if Wilson comes out of the gate early and starts to win the early rounds. I don't think this guy's chopped liver. I really think that he can fight, and he's going to be looking to showcase that this weekend. But I do have Emmanuel Nivarate winning this fight by late stoppage. What are your thoughts on this fight? Who do you have winning this one? Let me know in the comment section below. If you would like to support the channel, there's a couple ways that you can do so. You can like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you would like to support by way of donation, you can find options in the description below. Also, my Cash App handle will be on screen as well. Any amount goes towards the growth of this channel and will be greatly, greatly appreciated. So with all that being said, if you've been watching the video, this one, do me a favor and subscribe to the channel and we'll definitely see you next time.